We are live. Okay. So, hi everyone, and welcome to the TU Animation Industry Club podcast. Today we're going. We'll be talking over about games based on TV shows and movies. We'll discuss the process of developing these games, the challenges and benefits involved, and some of our favorite and least favorite examples. We'll also talk about some of the things you need to do to get the rights to develop a game based on a show or movie, as well as how to make sure your game is faithful to the source material. Finally, we'll share some advice for anyone who wants to develop a video game based on a show or movie. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. My name is Morat. Uh, my social media handle is Morat Tunes. Uh, I'm your hostess for today, and joining us are our fellow members and guests. Um, who would like to go? You can go. Um, I'm Yafet Banks, and my social media is um, <coughs> um, at Real Yachty Banks at tw- Twitter.com. Yeah. No, okay. Uh, I'm Naomi Dunbar, and my social media is Sylvie two underscores DG. I usually do a lot of drawings and maybe comics and animations coming soon. I'm Logan. I still don't have any social media. The only smart one here. <laughs> Yet again. Um, I'm Aiden Moore. You can follow me at Aiden B Voicing on Instagram. I'm Jules. And then Jules being short for Julian, and I'm still on Facebook and Instagram and Reddit and DeviantArt and a whole bunch of other, um, and and some other um, social medias. Okay. All right, uh, wait, did we get Logan? Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, that's everyone. Okay. So we'll be going over the steps um, that a game studio goes through to developing a game for an animation or an anime studio. So, the game development company approaches an anime studio with a proposal to make a game for them. And this tends to happen um, only after when an established IP um, has had enough time to be like kind of out there. Um, they, they only approach them if like an anime has at least gone on, on for like a good year and they know for a fact that this will continue to be a popular anime or show at least because games take about roughly maybe two years in development or a year um, before it gets actually made so it's a bit of an investment on the game developers part before they would want to make a big investment on this so the anime studio reviews the proposal and decides whether or not to move forward with the project If the anime studio agrees to move forward, the game development company will need to secure the rights to the anime. Once the rights have been secured, the game development company will need to create a game concept that is faithful to the anime. The game concept will need to be approved by the anime studio before the game can be approved. Um, Once the game concept has been approved, the game development company will need to create a prototype of the game. The prototype prototype will be used to cr- get will be used to get feedback uh, from the anime studio to make sure that the game is on track. Once the prototype is approved, the game development company can begin developing the final game. The game development company will need to work closely with the anime studio throughout the development process to make sure that the game meets their expectations. Once the game is complete, it will need to be marketed and released. Okay, so here's some tips on how uh, game development companies can approach an anime studio with the proposal of making a game for them. Do your research and make sure that you're familiar with the anime. Be prepared to discuss your vision for the game and how it would be faithful to the anime. Be prepared to answer any questions that the anime studio may have. Be professional and respectful in your approach. Be patient and understand that the anime studio may need time to consider your proposal. All right, now on to group questions. What are some of the challenges of developing a video game based on a show or movie? Well, right off the bat, like some, some game, some um, movies, shows, cartoons, whatever, are, aren't don't really lend themselves to a game adaptation because with 
games, there's a lot of interactivity in the stuff in the story. Like, um, I'm trying to think. Like, if you tried to make a game based off 2001: A Space Odyssey, it would just be a lot. It would, it would pretty much be a walking simulator. The only the, the closest to an action, um, it, the closest to action that movie has is when you have to like outwit um, Hal and like make your way to the central computer. That's about the closest to action you'll get. But the rest is just wait, waiting in the middle of space. Um, anybody else want to give? I guess it has to do with just generally the basis of pitching a premise. Like, if I were to, I guess, pitch in a premise of, I guess, one of my favorite shows, um, I guess, Love, Death, and Robots, and um, on Adult Swim, because Adult Swim kind of makes a little bit of shovelware games and like what what is it just bases on like what should i do with like the characters and how they interact with the story and how can i form it into a video game it's it's yes yeah, it's, it's part of just developing the premise can be challenging hmm. i don't know like left off in robots like each episode is sort of like a different story that might be a hard yeah, sell every, concept. yeah it, it's kind of kind of like a like a um, anthology, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It's a kind of like an anthology series, and like, how do you take different stories and put them into a video game? Yeah. Um. Also, um. Um. With um. Back to what I was saying about some shows or movies don't lend themselves to video game creation. Um. It also it, that will often lead to developers like taking certain liberties, like. Um, example, a game I, you can't see, but I have here Fester's Quest based off the Adams Family. Mm. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah, it took a while. Um, yeah. Um, um, they, um, this is a top down shooter. Oh. So, eh? like, <laughs> I, I had that game. I, Wait I a minute. Like, Wait. <laughs> so, 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 it's like a Fester. So, the, the, the premise of the game is aliens invade, and it's up to Fester to stop them. And like, it, like I said, it's a top-down shooter, and occasionally it goes into like three D um, dungeons, like in um, in um, um, uh, um, fantasy fantasy star. That they'll have like three D dungeons, but like you like shoot monsters and stuff. It's a really it's a really difficult game. I would I would like to add that um, at least the intro the the song used in this particular game slaps so hard. I oh think it's yeah, like the best yeah, thing. definitely. <laughs> it, it's like it's like it's a remixed version of the Adams Family theme, but it's like it's chip tuned. It's it it it, re it is really good. <laughs> Highly recommend listening to it. Or just watching the nerd video on on Fester's Quest. <laughs> I mean, I, I would say, um, like, certain games, uh, like, uh, that are trying to adapt, like, um, complex animes, like, for instance, um, like, like, Chainsaw Man would be, like, a hard anime to adapt into a game, or any of those, like, uh, surreal horrors. Um, I'm not really familiar with Chainsaw Man. What, could you, like, go oh. into detail as to what Okay, basically, Thanks. you know how, like, Spider-Man works? Yeah. It's similar to that, but with a dog like chainsaw demon hybrid. with a chainsaw on its head. Yeah. But it's instead like, of. No, it is biting. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I guess maybe if the company was like the same one who developed. Um, uh, it's not Street Fighter. It, what's, that, what, what's that bloody gore game? Uh, Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, could, I actually could see. Chainsaw Man, like, has a video game. <laughs> Fighting game, yeah. Fighting game. Yeah, it's like a DLC character in uh, Mortal Kombat. DLC, pace description. Yeah, oh. because they, they got Jason and uh, Freddy and a few other horror characters on, on there. Oh, speaking of, um, brief tangent, have you have you guys seen um, Sonic Dream, Dream? I think, wait, was it? Um, let me look it up. Dream. Dream. Um, there's, there's, a new, there's a new Sonic game that just got announced. Um, oh. oh, yeah. The Sonic fighting game? No, it's not no, a fighting game. Hold on. Superstars? Yeah, not not Superstars. I saw the trailer. I don't remember what its name is. Um, Sonic, it's called Sonic Dream Team. It, it and based off the trailer, it looks like a pretty fun 3D platformer. Only problem is it's locked behind Apple Arcade. Oh. 
Yeah, so. Nice. So, yeah, that's a paid subscription service, so. <laughs> Ouch. Indeed. Not yeah, so that's, that's the. Sanders t- begging yeah, Apple now. T- t- um, t- tangent over, sorry. I mean, hey, tangent. <laughs> I just wanted to like vent my um, anger at that decision because it looks like a fun game. You could like play as multiple characters. You could play as Rouge, oh, Rouge, Rouge, uh, Rouge, Knuckles, Amy, the whole nine yards. It's like fun, but with expense. But like, it feels like a fun game. But it's but it's, yeah, it's locked it's, behind yeah, a server that I, I. Does anybody else here have an Apple Arcade? No. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> like, I wouldn't give Apple. A cent of my money. Oh. <laughs> Are you an Android dude? I mean, I'm Apple, but I just oh. download free games. All right. Well, okay. Let me. I'm, I'm breaking up this tangent now. So <laughs> yeah. this yeah. is your show. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What are some of the benefits of developing a video game based on a show or a movie? Well, I mean, the Franchise. obvious, huh? Franchise. Yes. Well, the, the, yeah. the, the, the obvious being yeah. it, it's marketing for the show. Yeah, marketability. Mm-hmm. And, um. Oh. I guess one of my favorite uh, Shovel War games I played was, <laughs> if you heard this before, okay, Simpsons Hit and Run. <laughs> that, yeah, that, that wasn't Shovel that. that The game was actually good, yeah. though. People like and that also, game. I'd like to add that there's also world building, world building benefits to it as well. Like, you get to you explore, get to explore. Plot things. On, you get to explore plot details on the games that you couldn't in the show. Like, Pokemon, for example, they'll have details okay. yeah. in the Pokemon games that they won't have in the show, like electric moves will affect ground type Pokemon in the um, anime, but in the games, it, they don't. I think like Pokemon is a different situation oh. because didn't didn't well, the, the game, game came did, out the, 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 the game came the out show. first before the show? Yes. The game, yeah. yeah, but yeah, with the show, yeah, that the, that's the other way around. With the show, they because it's a show, and it's a, I guess it's because it's saying that children too, they they're allowed to do things that contradict the games. Um. Yeah, I like what you said about like it gives you an opportunity to explore um, more of the world and characters, um, but there's a, like that's only if the creators consider that canon. Yeah, but I wasn't paying attention. What game? Um, well, we're we're just saying that like games. Um, he um, he mentioned that the games could um, expand the world and lore behind. Well, I don't know what game. The rest of the oh, well, well, we were just saying in, ge- in general. He, he mentioned Pokemon, but yeah, as an example, yeah, the the show ex- expands on the franchise, on the world of the games. Like, um, I, I would say, if anybody played uh, has played the Adventure Time games, there's um, there's the one there was like a dungeon crawler. Um, yeah, I played like that. On the it wasn't DS? very good. I, I think I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, there's a I, DS. I know. I, you're I, about I played it, it on the. It was not Wii a good game. Wii U. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's at least the benefits of like you know that the moment it is released, it will already have a fan base, so it'll be it will sell more more likely than compared to if it was just like an original piece. I mean, I mean, it depends on the company. Like, if it's an original piece, like like Nintendo could like set could like make something completely original, sell gangbusters, but um. True. Yeah, but I guess not. I I, I don't think like that. I said uh, I guess not everybody as sort of like they're doing the research of like what company made it. Like definitely the moment that they you know a kid um, recognizes a character on the on the cover, they just go like ask their parents like, hey mom, can you buy me this game based off a show that I like? Well, nobody could even nobody could even imagine something like Pikmin. But Nintendo um, created and released it, so of course it's gonna sell. But um, so back to what um you said, mm-hmm. um, Atari bring bring it back because I'm in, I'm in the retro consoles. Bring it back to Atari. They marketed the hell out of ET. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but but um, we'll probably I'll go into ET when we later. But like, that, that's yeah, definitely that's, a that's, good that's, example yeah. of shovelware. They they marketed the mm-hmm. actual hell out of that game in the eighties. They, they, they made, like, the cutest they little the Christmas cutest, Christmas commercial, commercial where, like, where e- E.T. comes in as Santa Claus and delivers the game. And, then, <laughs> and the kid's like, I, for, I forgot how it goes. 
No, I yeah. think it, I, I think it's just E.T. E. E. He just waddles in, and then oh. there's like music playing, and then like he just drops it off on the Christmas tree. Yeah. That's it. And then Atari, which is everybody happy holidays. Yeah, I, I remember a kid going. Yeah, and I can watch going like E.T. I'm like. Sorry, if you, if, for those listening, if you're wondering what that crackling sound, I'm trying to open this thing, but it won't open. <laughs> it's like it's like little, it's like this lollipop thing. All right, what next? I mean, it's it's worked to me once. Uh, one time, I was uh, looking up games on the Switch, and I came across a game for Popeye, and uh, pretty much it was just a oh oh. It was I don't a very it. it was a very cheap game. Okay, so like, we actually had. The, the, the Popeye game he's referring to is a 3D remake of Popeye on NES. Mm -hmm. So the goal is you um, you go around the world and like olive is like olive oil is shooting hearts and they're like scattered throughout, throughout the open world. And, you have yep. to, and the goal of it of each level is to collect the hearts until the next level starts. You got to avoid Bluto. Mm -hmm. If you get the spinach, you go to Bluto. You can fight them. And, and, and it's it's yeah, like I said, it's a it's a very 3D adaptation of the 1982 arcade game by Nintendo, and the arcade game is way better. Mm -hmm. Long shot, and mm -hmm. the other one is the newer version is just Steam Asset Hell. <laughs> don't don't. What I'm saying is don't touch it. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Uh, do you think small creators could develop a game for show? Um, like an example, a like uh, a small game developer decides that they want to make a game based on a show and tries to contact the studio who owns the rights to the show. Um, it's happened before. It's I um I, I remember hearing somebody doing that. Um. Oh my god, it's like it, it's swimming around in my brain somewhere, but I can't. It, I can't. Um. Just um. You you guys speculate while I try and think of it. It's like 50 50, 50 you know? yeah because like it could there could be some chance where like the guy's like of course and then there's the also some chance because like if it's a big show especially that they probably just won't even pay attention or care mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, also the legal department mm -hmm. yeah. and yeah it probably has to do like with the marketability as well and like if you if, if you're like an indie creator if you want to pitch um, pitch a, a game of your favorite show to I guess to the executives and who own that show, um, it can vary on the company's standards at first. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying, right? Yeah. Um, a good example, um, this isn't what I was trying to think of, but it, it goes back to Popeye. So Donkey Kong actually started off <coughs> as a Popeye game because Shigeru Miyamoto was a huge fan of Popeye, as a lot of Japanese kids were back in the um, 80s. Um, so, um, Nintendo, keep in mind, this is like early Nintendo. They weren't as big as they were now. They were like a small game company. They approached King, Fe King Feature Syndicate, but they weren't Atari or they, they weren't like Atari. So they were like, ah, no, 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 you don't get the rights to our characters. So, uh, Popeye became Mario, um, Ludo became Donkey Kong and Olive Oil became Pauline and that, then Nintendo went on to release Donkey Kong, and that game became a smash hit, and so much that um, that when Nintendo approached King Feature Syndicate again to make a Popeye game, they said, "Hell yeah!" Because you're the guys that made Donkey Kong the most successful game, um, arcade game of all time. <laughs> so that's how we got the Popeye NES game that became the, the crappy Steam Popeye game on Switch. <laughs> that is. That is definitely a good point. I like having credibility definitely raises your um, likelihood to get approval to uh, just go to any studio and make develop a game for them, even if you're like a single person. Mm -hmm. um, like definitely, the FNAF games was made by one guy. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, one, yeah, one guy. Scotty Kaufman. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> And then it became a big hit about, what, 10, literally 10 years later? 
slowly. I mean, I mean, it was a it was a hit. It was a hit. I mean, the first game Back was a hit. Yeah, it's, it's, like, it's, especially it's, after it's on its ninth anniversary now. It'll turn ten next year. Yeah. Oh my. Oh my God. Yes. Yeah, FNAF, know, it's FNAF turns ten next year. Oh yeah. my God. And Undertale follows suits in 2025. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> We're living in a scary period. Yeah. Now. Just a re- just a reminder, like Gravity Falls predicts stop. this. Stop. Oh what? no. No. What? I don't want to hear that again. What? I, I, I don't want to know uh, what? Wait, it's, are, are, are you talking about the sand? No, the like, no, Seuss, no. Yeah, the Seuss episode where he the buys Seuss, this. In the episode, there's an episode of Gravity Falls where Seuss finds this game, yeah. finds like this dating sim game. Oh my god. And then and the character, but like, girl in it is sentient. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And, and then tra- Seuss And needs- in the climax of the episode, she takes over a bunch of animatronics and tries to... <laughs> no! Before that! Oh this, my god! Yeah, this yeah, yeah. Game, the thing is, is that that episode yeah. pre- predates the release of both Five Nights at Freddy's crazy. and Doki Doki Literary. That, that's awesome. terrifying. That's, that's scary. That's terrifying. It's like deja vu, but... Deja vu? Instant. It's like, oh god. In two episodes. Oh, in one episode, actually. Sorry. All right, so I think the example I was trying to think of, it wound up being the PC Harry Potter game. But I, I think the game companies went, I mean, the, um, the Warner Brothers approached them first, and they just oh, yeah. allowed, um, and I think the creativity part came in when they, they allowed liberties to be taken. They, they The movie was still in production, the, the um, Sorcerer's Stone, Philosopher's Stone, um, while they were making the game, so they had to draw a lot from the books instead. And the only, the only references they had to the movie were blurry photos taken up, taking taken of the set of themselves. Um, so, yeah, it was a mess. But it, we got a pretty decent PC game out of it. Okay, what are some of the things you need to do to get the rights to develop a video game based on a show or movie? Like, you need a lot of you money. Need a, yeah. You need a lot. That's well. That's what my mom's friend told me because I wanted to try and copyright my stuff. And mm-hmm. uh, I mean, like, it looks very cheap, but you gotta get a lawyer if someone does mm-hmm. actually try to steal your stuff. It's just a lot of money going just, to the legal yeah. department. Well, I mean, technically, mm-hmm. if when you're creating your own stuff. Um, it is automatically there's like a creative rights that every artist has where like the moment so anything you make that comes into existence you own the copyright to that already um yeah oh yeah you well, i thought i thought i thought just because pe- i, I, I see like was, i said like you had to like yeah i thought, I thought you had to actually file a copyright, copyright that's or something what I, uh, yeah, yeah that's what i thought i think it's like well i think it's I more of like when you, when you <laughs> people like, in the comments sure. i mean if you're people making in the art, comments if you have that picture that you drew when you were five you own that yeah. well also just like double check for us please because like we're not lawyers don't don't that's imitate <laughs> don't <laughs> Don't use dark tactics to... <laughs> I mean, because, like, I searched it up before, and, like, there were a couple of prices, like, for one artwork, I think it was $80. It was... I don't remember fully. Either that was, like, to purchase the copyright or to have a copyright. I'm not sure. Well, I think it's more like when you want to start making a business out of it, then I, then I guess maybe it's, like, worth investing into, like, the property. Like, I mean... Well, then again, there's also I mean, trademark. Yeah, yeah. Tra- yeah. I, I guess so, but I mean, like, okay, so... I don't know, it, it's sort of like, say you make a game, and then somebody else makes a game that's similar to yours, but, you know, you need to prove that you did the game first, so you need to... Um, oh. Oh, yeah. that, was, that was a big issue with, um, once again, taking it back to retro mm-hmm. games, mm-hmm. Um, Casey Munchkin. This was a game released for the Magnavox Odyssey 2. And it was about it was a top down maze game where he plays a little dude with a mouth and he goes around eating dots. Oh, oh. sounds familiar. Right? <laughs> yeah, sounds familiar. So, so yeah, it was pretty um, so if, the, if my memory serves me correctly, Magnavox wanted to snag the rights to Pac Man, but Atari already did that. The home So the way um, video game copyright worked a bit differently back then, so a different company could have the rights to like 
whatever medium it's on. So if you have, if you want to make a cartridge game, you need to get the cartridge rights to a game. If you want to make a disc game, disc rights, arcade, arcade rights, so on and so forth. So um, so um, Atari managed to snag the home computer rights for Pac-Man. So so nobody else but Atari can make a Pac. So. Uh, Magnavox didn't like that, so they made their own Pac-Man c clone called Casey Munchkin, and Atari took them to court over it, to the point where I think they had to like unlist it from the shelves. They had to take it off the shelves, but they made a Casey Munchkin too. But in, but that was a more original maze game. So, awesome. Okay, what are some of the things you need to do to make sure your game is faithful to the show or movie? Um, tons and tons of research. Yeah. And, well, let's say that I make a game about, this is the only thing that comes to mind, I don't know why, um, Evangelion. You need to go through the entire thing and then like um, make sure you get every single detail, take a bunch of notes, and make sure you have a good story that you're going to make a game on because... Mm -hmm. If not, you're going to make a lot of people angry. Well, usually the story takes care of itself. It's it's more it's um, sticking to, to the game. That's more the like, yeah, consistency. If, like, if you just go off go off from the story, if you do, do, like, something completely different, it can rise to just some issues. Um... Like um, I'm trying to think. Like, of what if they made like a like a pachinko or, or like a gambling? That's game different. Out that's of like, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's different. So, that yeah, is I mean, like if they make like a little small, different. make let's say pinball game. Yeah. That's not gonna be too, too bad. Too too. That that's like, not gonna be. Pokemon like, Shuffle. No, mm -hmm. oh, sorry, no one's playing a pinball game for its story. Right. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, like Pokemon Shuffle is literally just candy, almost candy crush Pokemon. You're not playing it for the story. Not that they're necessarily is one you're just playing it because you're bored mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's pokemon uh, once again um i say no one plays pinball for the story bring it back to popeye once again a there's, a, there's a popeye pinball game really? and, and, and it has a storyline yeah. so you have to or at least what? one of them you have to rescue animals from um bluto <laughs> um, i mean there is, like, Wait, this is a digital thing or is it a physical thing? So, no, no, it's a physical pinball table, but, oh, but it has like a screen on it. Oh, oh I want to play that. Cool. That's oh, I'm not gonna lie. I, oh, hold on, look, look up, look up Popeye Valley pinball. Hold on. Okay, okay, I'm gonna well, search then again, it right now. Sonic Shuffle. That's like a like almost Mario Party, and there is a story towards it. Oh, the story. Oh my. All right, hold I on. I searched the Popeye pinball machine. So, um, it's the, the thumbnail. It's it, it, the, the thumbnail looks like this. Oh my! Oh my God! That's kind of cool. Oh, Bally pinball. Okay. Huh. Oh, it's the old kind of pinball yeah. machines that no one ever sees anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see Windows. Oh, so, 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 yes, yeah, so, so like. the, the way you progress through the story, you have to hit like certain targets at certain times. And it, it's very, it's like, it's, it's, it's pinball, it's all based on luck, most of it. If, unless, you're, <laughs> no. unless you're a pinball wizard. Not me. Not me either. But, um, I think we're getting off track here. <laughs> Sorry. Well, it's a game, but yeah. It is. Um, I'm still playing them on Windows. And those retro pinballs. Um, the space one. The, yeah, uh, yeah, the space, all of them. yeah. Oh, I love the space. I one. like the space one too. The best non the the best no internet game ever made. Yeah. Honestly, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of uh, um issues with sticking to story. Um. Another tangent. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. I guess maybe it could be limiting depending on what the story is. Um, well, well, once again, I bring up um, a hypothetical 2001 A Space Odyssey game where, like, how would you do that? If you, if you guys have seen have, have, have you guys seen 2001? Nope. No. 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 Space it Odyssey 2001? Yeah. The one that would... That's like, a, like that old, the, the old show. The Howl Robot. Yeah. So, computer. So the yeah, whole movie, though, not the it's, it's a good movie, but the whole movie is pretty much like a spaceship drifting through space, 
and at the end the uh, the um the robot try the yeah. computer tries to kill everybody. Oh uh, yeah. It's okay. The how, the how like adaptations of it. Isn't that what uh, Wally's auto is based Stan on? It's Stanley uh-huh. Kubrick. Yeah. I feel like yeah, most the evil AIs are based some way on. How remember, I remember I, I was robot. Based. I robot. Will yeah. Smith. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My friend is scared of that. Yeah. How would you make a um? So um, let's try and think just for fun. Just pick any random movie. We'll try and make a game. We'll we'll try and make a game out of it. Okay. B so. movie number. <laughs> <laughs> there's, 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 there's already actually, actually video game. There's, 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 there's actually yeah, 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 game Oh, never mind. It's all game cube. Yeah. Um. Mega Mind then. Um, there um, is a game on Mega Mind. Yeah. yeah. Oh my yeah. god. If it's, if it's, I think. If it's DreamWorks and it was, it was released between two. like 2000 and 2010, they made a game out of it. Well, that makes and sense. So I, remember, sense yeah. I remember the Madagascar games. Yeah. Say, I, say what? Here. Say barely, very vague memory. Of very, yeah. Like uh, they made a oh, game of The Cat in the Hat. Yeah, I, oh, I, I, yeah, have yeah, yeah, I have that. I have that. Yeah. What? The, the live action one. Oh, oh, oh it was. I, I thought you were talking barely about like anybody those, talked that about it. Kids website. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Mike Myers, <laughs> the late Kelly Preston. I'm, I'm, what's her name? I'm Kelly Preston. He, 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 yeah. Yes. She was in it. Yeah, yeah. She's the mother. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, she dies. So they did. It is a Wii game. Oh. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure there's a little, like some games in here you can't make. They made a Wizard of Oz game. Oh, they did? Yeah, yeah, right here. Whoa. <laughs> How is it? Well, it's, how? It, well, for those at home, watch the Angry Video, video Game Nerds video on it, but um, it's a platformer mm-hmm. where like you have to go through sh- sh- like worlds and stuff. Sorry if my voice sounds muffled. I'm eating a lollipop. <laughs> yeah. um, it's a platformer, a barely functional, barely functioning platformer where you fight Pee Wee's Playhouse enemies. And um, Pee Wee's Playhouse. <laughs> okay. Once again, watch like look look up ABGN Wizard of Oz. Okay. Um, it, it is actually hilarious. But um, yeah, it's, you're just your standard platformer. Okay. We fight a boss at the yeah. end. You the get witch. to play. You, you play. play. You play as all the different characters. You actually melt the witch instead of the. Yeah, yeah. Actually, um, based on the nerd video, the lion character is the best character in the game because of his like slap oh. attack. Slap attack. <laughs> A white chick's game. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's like no, there's no white. There's no white chick's game that I know of. <laughs> so um everybody likes um Friday the thirteenth, the Friday the thirteenth game, right? Yeah, yes, yeah. I've, 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 I've yeah, I think it is important on the the Wii U. Yeah, no, yeah. no not with the this, Switch. This, Fri- yeah. this Friday the thirteenth game? The NES uh, one? Yeah. I think so. <laughs> it's uh, it's like super know. hard to, to play and figure out. Just like you play as like how many of the kids? Um, like, you so the it the interesting about the NES Friday the Thirteenth game. It's actually getting a, a turnaround. Like people are starting to like it. So the premise is you play as the camp counselors and you go throughout Crystal Lake and get every so often an alarm will go off and you have to check the map and a certain cabin will blink. That's the cabin Jason's old, Jason's at. You have to go to the cabin, fight Jason, and if you do this enough times, you beat the game. Cool. Eventually, you fight Jason's mom. What? Yeah. He has a mom. He has a uh, yeah. Yeah. She's the main villain of the first movie. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't oh. have known because I never watched it. Oh, the twist ending, man! Come on. The, the... But in the but in the game in the NES game, um, Jason's mom's a disembodied head that floats. Okay, that's kind of funny. Um, I mean, in the movie, she does die by getting her head cut, cut off. Yeah. Off. <laughs> um. But uh, Wayne. But um, uh, the challenge of sticking to the story, um, Wayne's World, also comes to mind. So Wayne's World is a show about guys that run a public access television show from their basement. So probably the precursor to somebody with an internet show. And the main, the, the main conflict is um, guy, um, some TV execs come and try and take the show, and that's it. So how do you make a game based off that? I think it'd be more of like, a, like an RPG type of game. Because I, Explain. I, <laughs> I mean, you have a point, but... Huh? I mean, well, I don't think I have... 
watched the movie, so I just assumed that like because one, it's just like games that are based on real life. What um, movie did he say? Wayne's World. Wayne's World. Wayne's World. Uh, yeah. So, um, oh. there's multiple Wayne's World games for NES, Genesis, Super oh. Nintendo. Oh, do you think oh, you did do a good job then? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I guess. No. I guess. Uh, no. Well, Especially the NES game. It is horrible. An attempt is an attempt. Um, one of the bosses, he, um, I don't know if you guys seen the movie Wayne's World, but there's there's a part where um, I think Garf makes a donut man. Like, he yeah. takes a bunch of um, munchkins and like put and sticks them together, makes a little stick figure. That's a boss in the game. <laughs> or an enemy. <laughs> and, yeah, it's, um, I think the, um, the SNES game made up of thing where the like a, a blob kidnaps um garf and you have to rescue him as wayne so yeah not a lot of create there's a lot of stretching you need to do there i mean well how much stretching is bad stretching you know what i mean like how much uh when it becomes like completely rec- unrecognizable i guess so i mean they could always pull the old like um like everything was, or like the dream fantasy. <laughs> okay, no, everything was just a dream. Mm-hmm. You know, that, a, that. a good example of like stretching was, um, so I have Ghostbusters on Genesis. Mm-hmm. Now, th- that game was released um, after the second movie came out, so it'd be kind of be, it'd be inappropriate to like make Ghost a game based off the first movie after the second movie came out. Mm-hmm. So what Sega did was they created their own story. But it just has the Ghostbusters in it, and it actually turns out to be a pretty, pretty decent game. In fact, I'm I'm ashamed that it showed off. It's a it's a it's a platformer, but each level is like open, and you can explore each area. And like the main goal is to like go through the level and find like a set number of ghosts to bust. Meanwhile, you're dodging like other enemies and whatnot. It's re- it's a really good game, although and Winston's not in the game for whatever reason. Um, but there's a special edition. Someone's actually like doing a special edition, um, where they like add Winston in and like add a whole bunch of other um, 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 features that make the game better. So yeah, um, if you're interested, it's called Ghostbusters Special Edition on the Genesis or Mega Drive for our European and Japanese listeners. <laughs> Across the world, you never know. I don't know if that's, there's some guy in France just listening to some rando podcast by tapping. <laughs> you <laughs> don't. You never know. Yeah. Suck blue. These guys are all right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, what are some of the things you need to do to make sure your game is successful? Or did I already go over this? Um. No. 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 You did. Oh. No. Oh, I did. Yeah. I think. I think. You, you, you didn't. Did. You, you, you. You. I don't think you did. Okay. Mm-hmm. No. Because I, I think on, question five is like on success, but no. I don't okay. think All right. Um. Sh- sh- make sure it's well fun to play. <laughs> I think that's the, the most <laughs> obvious. Thing. Please, please don't boring. make it. Yeah. Please don't make it boring. Please don't make it hard either. Mm-hmm. Oh, well. Okay. You can. Like, well, it can be challenging, yeah, but like, don't make the mechanics. Um. Like annoying, annoying. Stuff. Yeah. Um, take liberties, but don't take too many liberties. Uh, yeah, and yeah. I would say the music, because definitely earlier today when our yeah. friend here was uh, playing the Who Framed Roger Rabbit, I think the song was starting to get to him. It's like, like please stop. I want to play something else. It wasn't the sound. It wasn't the sound. It was no. It's just the game sucked. I know it's hard. It's impossible to play. <laughs> um, so yeah, earlier um, listeners, we um, I brought my Retron Five over and we played a whole bunch of licensed video games. And Who Framed Roger Rabbit on NES by LGN was one of them. And yeah, I would have to agree with him. It is a, I just it's one of those games where you just don't know what to do. <laughs> Yeah, that's why. You can look up a walkthrough. <laughs> that you know, the there's title. nothing to do. Well, well anyway. before be, before internet walkthroughs, you had to look up Nintendo Power. Oh God! Oh jeez! No. Oh, oh. Is that why there was nothing to do in there? <laughs> I'm sure, there's nothing to do. That uh, game saw various types of ass. <laughs> Hold on, you ain't wrong, buddy. Oh. You ain't wrong. Right okay. <laughs> Sorry, I was gonna haul in your space there. So, um, th- certainly, um, how they advertise um, is is very important, especially like with the with how 
how everyone has like a very little attention span, you pretty much have to grab everybody's attention within the first five seconds. So you either have to do something like really funny or just be like talk really fast. Well, so well when it comes to like movie adaptations of games, um, they'll often just like bundle the commercial in with the um, um, like in the previews of like the Blu-ray or DVD. Like for example, Scott Pilgrim, bringing it back to Scott Pilgrim, that yes. that game was advertised alongside the movie, and that and I think we the. It was most of the niche fan base that caused it to take off, and like other people started playing it. That game start became a hit. Uh, if you guys play Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, the game, it's mm-hmm. good. Yes, I, I definitely have it. Yeah. Although it's based more off the comic than it is the movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I think certainly like if a certain YouTuber um, plays that game, like for instance, FNAF oh, got yeah. its yeah. got its oh. jump start thanks to Markiplier. 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 I, I I grew up with um, the Dashy playthrough. Oh um, yeah. Dashy, some call me Johnny, which is com- they, they're, they're, um, some call me Johnny is a they're a, an underrated um, game yeah. channel. Yeah. I, I, but okay. yeah, highly recommend them. Sometimes they'll go by SGB Super Gamer Brothers. Um, check check yeah. them out, especially their Sonic stuff. YouTube promotion can really start a game off, uh, yeah. especially and also Twitch like Twitch streamer promotion. Too. It kind of yeah. makes you wonder, did, did like Toby Fox like reach out to Markiplier to play his game? <laughs> hey, Mark, buddy. I mean, it's you, you it's wanna, definitely. You want to try this what? super awesome RPG game? <gasps> But it is certainly a thing where, like, game developers would actually come up to uh, YouTubers and ask them to, like, hey, uh, like, a week or two before their game even comes out, oh, yeah. they, they give them access. Yeah, yeah. yeah. completely. It, I'm, 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 like, making my um, platforming engine right now, and once I mold that into an actual game, I'm definitely going to be, like, low, I'm, just, like, hunting them down. <laughs> yeah. Either you ask yeah, them and they do it, or you yeah. pay them. Yeah. Pay them. Yeah. How much money you got? I'll muster them up enough. All right. Okay. I, I can always like have a Patreon set up or something. Yeah. Yeah. Rob some banks. <laughs> <laughs> Rob the banks. But definitely not like, banks uh, anymore, though. Just saying. Well, oh wait. Is there even paper money in banks anymore? Just yeah, like, yeah. I mean, I guess they, they, in, the, yeah. in the ATMs, yes, but ATMs I mean, like, more the, it keeps getting like taken out and put somewhere else, or just like yeah. there's always those big trucks. Yep, Normally, yeah. yeah, I guess there's How more hacking in banks than. But um, I love banks. those candies. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Kickstarter or Indiegogo. Indiegogo. Oh, although be careful because like not. Not a lot of people have faith in like Kickstarter projects. Yes, because yeah. because more often than not they like fall on their faces. Yeah. Um, two two famous examples being mm. the Airbrella. If you guys know, do you guys know what the Airbrella is? What? Yeah. So uh, it's it, it's a stick that you hold and it has like a jet on top. And the idea is it would oh, blow. It would I know blow, your top. <laughs> the idea <laughs> is it, it would blow, it would blow r- rain away from you. What? So. <laughs> It was, it was a scam, basically. It sounds hilarious. <laughs> it sounds like a doctor Merton version. Yes. So, um, the second example, um, have any of you ever heard of Mighty Number no. 9? Yes. I Mighty feel like... No. Oh, no. Yeah, I feel... Oh, what is that? I feel like there was a big period in time where Kickstarter video games were huge, and then it was Mighty Number no. 9 and Ukulele that were sort of kit oh, caused people to lose oh. their faith. Oh, my God. Oh, in, I that. Kickstarter video games. So for those who don't know, um, um, Mighty Number no. Nine is KG Inafune's attempt to bring classic Mega Man back into um, the public eye. KG Inafune being one of the creators of Mega Man. Yeah. Um, did he? Um, I I know he didn't like draw the design. Somebody else did. Um, I I don't know exactly what his role in it was. Um, but like, yeah, it was KG Inafune and some other guy. Yeah, you, you guys can look it up for yourselves. But um. Um, short version is Akira Kitamura was his, was the other guy's name. Oh, okay. So, but short version, the game didn't do well, and it it it, lo- it, <laughs> um, it was bad. Did he lose a lot of money. Um, I don't know the um reception in terms of like um monetary gain. Mm-hmm. I just know like cr- cr- critically speaking, it didn't 
do well. Yikes. But yeah, yeah it, it was... It was uh, really bad. Hmm. Oh, another game that kind of killed the Kickstarter trend was Shenmue Free. By Sega? It, Wait. it was a Kickstarter. <laughs> yeah, it was done by in Kickstarter. Like, so, so Sega needed well, what? Uh-oh. Se- so that, Sega needed Kickstarter. Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay, no, it wasn't made by Sega. Oh, okay. okay. So oh. Was, was it like a fan it was game? Made by, it was published by Deep Silver. So, wait, oh, so then, was it a fan game, game or did um, Sega contract was, them? No, it was Yu Suzuki, the creator of Shenmue. Oh. He wanted to continue the story of the game because, two, if you're familiar with Shenmue, you'll know that Shenmue 2 ends on a cliffhanger. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but he wanted to continue it, so in 2016... At the PlayStation E3, they they announced that they were bringing back Shenmue with a Kickstarter for Shenmue Free, and it's it. I'm pretty sure it's like the re- has the record for fastest funded Kickstarter ever. Oh, wow! What do you know? Like it was funded by like the I think it was like apparently funded by the time the the by the time the E3 press conference was over or something like that, but. Okay, well, yeah, did, basically, did it deliver? No, it was bad. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it tried, because they tried to, well, here's the thing. So basically what happened was that, basically, first of all, the voice acting, wait, have you, are you familiar with the voice acting in the first two Shenmue games? Um, I never played the Shenmue games. Okay, so basically the first, the voice acting in the Shenmue games you know those, like, really bad anime dubs from, like, the 80s and 90s where everyone where everyone talks like this? Oh, you had that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they taught, yeah, they tro- they replicated that for Shenmue Free. <laughs> That's what they sound like in Shenmue 1 and 2, and they did that for Free as well. Dude. When I think when I think of bad video game voice acting, my, the first thought that comes to mind, House of the Dead 2. Yeah, it was... Yeah, but that's like hammy quality bad voice acting. You, you this just, is monotone. You disturb the life cycle of mankind. Yeah, this is like the opposite. <laughs> this is like on the opposite end of bad voice oh. acting. Okay. But basically... Like so bad it's good then? No. Okay. <laughs> it's just bad. Well, I mean, sort of. Just plain bad. Uh, sort of. They, but yeah, they all talk monotone, basically. But anyway, beyond that, then there was the gameplay... Which, uh, for some reason, they had this system where you could, where, or the game would basically, where basically in the game, it has a day system. Yeah. Where you would go, where every, where you could be in the game for like, where you could, where each day was like the, uh, it consisted of like eight hours, I think it was. Mm-hmm. And ev- and the, those hours equivalent to, equivalent to like, Two or three minute each hour co- was the equivalent to like two or three minutes of real life play time, uh-huh. and at the and once you reach the end of every day, you immediately get kicked back to the house, the game out to like your main spot that you're in, and then have to start the entire thing o- day over. <sighs> To over back from where you started. So was that intentional or was that like a glitch or something? No, it was intentional. Yeah. Okay, and basically, and basically, each chapter of the game basically consisted of you playing luck-based mini games in order to get money to achieve a goal that you, in order to, to play more mini games, and then finally learn the thing that you need to do to progress the game. All right. So this, um, slightly um, was um, was um. Yakuza also developed by Yu Suzuki? Uh, I don't know, but I know it was influenced by Shenmue. Oh. Okay. You, I, I feel like the best way to put it is that Shenmue crawled so that Yakuza could run. Okay. But Oh, and then there's the worst part of the game. Oh. Mm-hmm. Everyone thought that this was going to be the conclusion to Shenmue's story. I was finally going to wrap up the plot that we've been waiting to see get a conclusion for, ye- for like 15 years. And then the game does not progress the plot at all. Wow. The game literally ends with nothing of value to happening in the plot. They, uh, one reviewer put it best. We waited 15 years for a Shenmue filler episode. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be pissed. How would you? 
Because oh, apparently boy. the main, apparently Yu Suzuki's goal was like to make play, make for the entire series like seven games long. Oh, uh, Lord, I would have just been done. And that's Absolutely. not that's not happening anymore. That's definitely not happening. And the thing, it's the same guy who gave us Daytona USA. What? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is that, I guess I'm the only fan of that game here. Sorry. No. Um. <laughs> Yeah, he did um, Space Harrier and um, um, Outrun. That, that was like his early stuff. Okay. Uh, what are some of your uh, favorite games based on a show or a movie? Okay, well, I'll let you guys go first. I think you, you already know mine. <laughs> this one is going to sound very childish. I don't know if there was even a plot in this one, but it's thick. Like, <laughs> Tiana's game on the leapfrog. I don't know. It's not. I'm pretty sure it's not my up to date favorite now because I don't really have any. Because it's mostly just Pokemon. But that's just like a good one. That's just distant from Pokemon that I just yeah. really. Yeah, enjoy I had a, I had a leapfrog too when yeah. I was younger. And the SpongeBob one. Yeah. And the Sponge. Yeah. Oh wait. Battle. Hold on. Best licensed game based off a cartoon. Battle for Bikini Bottom. Yes. Yeah. Right, yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. but I. I have to say, Lego Star Wars. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, never, that's not bad either. I say this, I'm going to get a lot of gas. I never watched Star Wars. Gasp. Gasp. <laughs> um, your you're best wa- just watching the, the original trilogy nowadays. Uh, my friend is going to take me through a lot of the things that he's, he seems deemed story worthy, so we're going to go on a trip. So, yeah. Uh, this, um, Star Wars is going through a rough period, to say the least. Oh, well, the prequels are worth watching just so you can watch the Clone Wars. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Does, does Disney have Disney have doing anything to do with that? Mm-hmm. Um, the prequels, no. The prequels, that was all George Lucas. Yeah, they that was before Disney. Yeah. What was it, 2014 they bought them? Or 2010? Like, yeah, I think like 2014. Yeah. Is it going down because of like um, all the stuff that's like Disney and Pixar? It's kind of like yeah, yeah, ripping yeah. off of people. Um, yeah, Dis- yeah, Disney pretty much ran the series into the ground yeah. uh, after yeah. after Last Jedi. Yikes! They tried reviving it, but it just didn't work. They were trying well, to like, revive. There wasn't even anything to revive. The series was already still going strong, and then they bought, and then they bought, and then Disney bought it. No, I'm, ta- I'm, I'm talking. Well, I mean, I like, didn't like George Lucas get depressed because of the reception of the prequels, and mm-hmm. that's what led him to sell on um, the series. I have no, I have no idea what oh, George Lucas is doing now. Uh, he's retired. But Very much, you know, yeah. he's made his money. He could just retire and do nothing. Oh, he he could, could have done that after the too. original oh. trilogy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, they still. Yeah, the, the still um, Return of Return of the Jedi and um, Empire Strikes Back were funded completely from his pocket. Right. Because because the first movie was such a success, wow. What she enjoyed, he doesn't. He likes being independent, <laughs> and he was smart enough to know that mer- merchandising would like take off. So like even so, when the first Star Wars movie came out, he asked Box for the exclusive merchandising rights, and that made him a rich person afterwards. <sighs> and a uh, fun fact: Steven Spielberg, um, at the time, was making Close Encounters of the Third Kind. And he had he had a bet with George Lucas that um, that Close Encounters would not be as good as Star Wars in terms of box office. And George Lucas said the opposite. He thought Close Encounters was going to be the big movie of '77, um, but Star Wars became a hit. And because of that, Steven Spielberg got some of the cut too, <laughs> even though he had nothing to do with the making of the first movie. Yeah. Uh, one that I really enjoyed was uh, the Grim Adventures Billy and Mandy game um, that was on like the PlayStation PlayStation Two. It was pretty much like a Smash Bros, but you get to play as the characters from the show. I think oh, I played that game. Kind of yeah. yeah. Or at least it was like, no, it was a Cartoon Network have, themed Smash Bros. Did they have game. Special moves. Yeah. Oh, that's oh, great. That's cool. That's cool. All right. Pretty right. much, if you wanted to win the 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 match, then you would have to do a special and input maybe like four moves and then no, okay. in, and then that's like an automatic win. Oh. If you don't, then you have to like redo it again, which is kind of annoying. But the, the buttons are not really that hard. You know, it gives you like 
like a, like a good 10 seconds for you to input the code. So it's I'm like, assuming it's like your basic quick time event fair. Yeah. All right, well, I have to go now. All right. I have to go yeah, as well, Joe. Yeah. All right. Alrighty. We'll be finishing up soon. Very fun, uh, very fun fun. today. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay, so uh, just to try, try to like wrap it up. Okay, what are some of your least favorite video games based on shows or movies? E.T. E <laughs> well, at university, everybody didn't like that. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of the obvious answer. Yeah. Um... um I would say there's definitely been a, a few games that seem like an obvious cash grabs, um, like uh, I'm trying to think. There's there are a couple of bad ones out there um, that just look cheap. Well, definitely the Popeye one that um, on that the I, that I, yeah that I played on Switch. I just gave it a chance. Um, I know the graphics didn't look good, but I didn't think it would be that cheap you know i only spend like maybe a buck it's, on it. it's, it's an arcade yeah. game hastily made into a 3d open world game yeah, yeah. Not, yeah that is that made to make the right move and like people it got <laughs> the creators of that game like started copyright striking people for like giving negative reviews on it too oh yeah yeah that was the golem game that came out oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the the, uh, the game developers had to apologize. Yeah, the, in the game there was an apology letter, and <laughs> in it they they misspell Lord of the Rings. <laughs> and then there was also the King Kong game that just King came King out. Oh yeah, they, uh, wasn't that developed by the same guys that did Big Rigs Over the Road Racing? Yes, <laughs> yes, it was. So for those of, those of you, the Big Rigs Over the Road Racing was a driving quote unquote game. Mm -hmm. Where it was barely even finished. It um, wasn't. Uh, oh yeah, it, it just straight up wasn't finished. Um, all you did was you drove you drove around a truck, and you could pass through buildings. And if you went backwards, you went faster than the speed of light. <laughs> and you can exit oh the map God. too. Once and again, the, and the, the opponent driver doesn't even go, move. Or at least in the in the in original the version, there's an update where he moves, but he stops just short of the finish line. <laughs> And they can't even, and they misspell your winner as your winner. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! That's the um, look, look, That's once again. Just... One, once again, I don't. I mean to keep plugging the AVGN, but I love the nerd. Look up Angry Video Game Nerd Big Rigs Over the Road Racing. It is well worth your time. Much, much like a lot of James Rolfe's content. Yeah. All right. All right, see you guys. All right. See you later. All right. Bye bye. Is there a trash can in here? Well, not in here. It's just like quick. over there. All right. Okay. Uh, what advice would you give someone who wants to develop a video game based on a show or movie? Research, research, research. Pretty yes. much the stuff we've been yes. saying for the past like, And hour. also get, well, not a lot of money, but just be prepared to know what you're doing. Yes. Yeah. yeah, just have everything kind of like in a bucket list mm -hmm. to make sure you go over the criteria. Yeah, sometimes like uh, the developer or the, the person who owns the property may not even ask to be compensated. Sometimes they might just be cool with the ideas of just like, you know, they just want to help you out. You know, some people are really oh, nice. If I, if I, I'm going to take like one last like look through to make sure I have everything. Okay. But if, yeah. I, if, if I left something behind, just like take it and just, and just keep it for me next week. Okay? Sure. Of course. Thank you. Hey. All right. I have a... Those games look pretty expensive. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I definitely don't want to... It's less the games, it's more the, the wiring. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm pretty sure I have all the games, but, you know, if you see it, just keep it for the next week. Okay, okay, thank you, guys. Mm -hmm. all right. Bye. All right, I'll better leave, though. Oh, okay, if you're sure. Yep. You guys open up. Hang up. Okay, hold on, hold on. Okay, okay, we just, uh, okay, I'll just do the last question, then do the wrap up. Um, what are some of the things you're looking forward to uh, in the future of video games based on shows or movies? Um, I guess better as more so, I guess better If you're going to be creative, or... try to like, I don't know, be you you can be creative, but still try to be in in between the story. Mm -hmm. Definitely uh, something fun. Definitely, pit, yeah, just pitching a fun premise to a show. Yeah. 
I would say now that uh, VR is um, mm, when yeah. VR becomes a little bit more affordable, oh, yeah, fair. then there will certainly be more games that are probably be like um, implemented into that. See you all when I see you all. All right, nice. see you later. All right. Well, I guess that's a wrap up on today's uh, today's uh, episode. So thanks so much for listening. If you have uh, stayed all the way to the end, thank you very much. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video with anyone who's interested in learning about the animation industry or just enjoy listening to us rant and stuff. <laughs> and you can have access to what we discussed today on our Discord, which you can find under TU Animation Industry Club on our Instagram. All right, that's a wrap.